Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Blender here. We're going to go ahead and create a camera, a looping camera animation. So if we have something that we want to our viewer to see all sides of, we can uh, use this uh, technique in order to get the camera to rotate around whatever that object is. So to begin with, we're going to quickly um, get rid of our default cube here. I'm going to use Shift A and add um, Suzanne, the monkey, the informal mascot here. Uh, we're going to lift the monkey up here, size it up a little bit. Uh, we'll shade smooth it by right clicking shade smooth. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw um, a material and some light on here just so we'll be able to see this in the render mode. If we click in render view, um, we can see it's kind of dark here at this point. So uh, let's add a let's add some light. I'm going to select the light here. I'm going to go down to click on the, the object data properties, turn it into a sun, and um, just set it to 10. Um, I think I'm going to go up into top orthographic by clicking 7 on my numpad, and I'm going to move around the light. It doesn't really need to come totally from the center here, but get a little bit of light on it. Maybe turn it down just a little bit. I'm going to go 7. Um, I can then set up a three-point light system. So I'm going to go ahead and shift D, duplicate that, uh, bring it over here to the side in order to get a bit of a fill and then a backlight. So I'm going to shift D, bring this back, swing this around, and put a little bit less light on the back. All right. So if we go back into I'm going to hit on the numpad 3, and one to get a sense it's brighter now. So I think we're good there. Uh, let's go ahead and put a material on it. Um, I'm gonna click on um, Suzanne the monkey, click materials, add a new material and just use the principal BSDF. I'm gonna go ahead and make it a gold monkey. So I'm gonna change the color here to yellow and then I'm gonna change metallic slider all the way up so that we've got our gold monkey there. Um, you can reduce the roughness in order to make it more reflective. All right, we've got a gold monkey. Now, how do we get our camera, which is up here, to go around the monkey? Well, we first need to create a path. Um, and so we're going to hit Shift A, but instead of going to Mesh Circle, we want to make sure to go down to Curve. So do not choose the Mesh Circle. We want to go to Curve and choose the Bezier Circle. We're going to construct a Bezier Circle right here. And if we take a look, there's our circle. We're gonna go ahead and just tap S to scale it, move that up in order to create a suitable path for a camera. All right, next we need to select our camera. So click on your camera, make sure it's highlighted in orange. We're gonna use Alt-R to uh, clear the rotation. So it's pointing down and Alt-G to clear the movement. Now we want it on the origin because when we click it onto here to follow this path, if it's displaced, it'll maintain that displacement. In other words, if it's up and rotated, it'll stay up and rotated relative to the path that we're attaching it to. So that's why we cleared it all out. Now, if we click on the circle, um, we can see it's a Bezier circle. So we might wanna start naming things here. So here, this could be um, the circular uh, path. Okay, and um, we're gonna go ahead and click on the camera and we want to attach that to the path. So you do that by adding a constraint. So this little pulley looking thing down here, it looks like two pulleys with a belt around it is the object constraint property. So click that. It looks a lot like the modifier. We don't have anything there other than an option to add. And then you get some constraints here. And what we're looking for is the relationship constraint all the way to the right. And we're gonna go down third up from the bottom follow path. So we're gonna click path. So we've told the camera that we're going to attach it to a constraint. It's gonna be constrained in some way. So we need, to, we need to then target the circle. So there's a couple ways to target the circle. You can click here and just choose the circular path. You can also choose the um, eyedropper and select the path. Um, and you can see once the path is selected, the camera goes from its original position and snaps out here onto the path. So we're almost there. We've got to actually get the another constraint so that it's actually pointing at our target here. So um, 
we're going to, uh, before we go any further, we're going to use fixed position and follow curve. So you want to make sure that it is following the curve and it's at a fixed position before you, uh, before you do the next step. Okay. So at this point, and you'll see an offset factor here, which we're going to play with in a little bit, but we're going to go back up and add a constraint. This time we're going to the third column over tracking and track two. And if you hover over it, you can see that this basically uh, add a constraint to the active object. It basically will, will stick to whatever we're wanting to point it to, but you do have to do a little bit of adjustment. So down here in track two, we got to, we got, we got to pick a target here. Our target, of course, is Suzanne the monkey. So now it's pointing at the monkey actually, and it looks like it is, um, it is there. It automatically uh, chose negative Z as the track axis and for up Y. So you might need to make those adjustments. If your camera is not pointing at your object, uh, it is likely that you need to set your track axis to negative Z and you'll need to choose up and set that to Y. All right, so at this point, uh, let's look through the camera. All right, so we're a little close here, even though, um, and there's a couple of ways that you can fix this if you tab, um, if you toggle off the camera. Um, one way is, of course, by increasing the size of your circle. As you do that, you get a little further away. But um, another way is to click on the camera. So select your camera. And then down here in your properties panel, you should see a camera icon. You can click that and you can adjust the focal length. If you reduce the focal length, your camera zooms out. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, now we need to animate the camera. So I'm going to toggle back out of the camera mode and um, we need to um, go back into our camera constraints here. And um, down here, you can see we've got a timeline. What we want to do is insert a keyframe in frame one. And then depending on how long we want it to take for the camera to move around the circle, we need to create a keyframe at the very end. So it's kind of like a before and after picture. So in frame one, um, what we want to do is just set the offset factor. That's, that's the starting point on the path. So we can actually right click with your mouse and then you'll see this option and you can left click insert keyframe. And it, it takes that information and it puts it down here in that little, that little dot right here. So you can see that dot. Okay. Now, if you want it to take three seconds to get around, we're at 24 frames per second. Um, how do we know that? It's it's the default. So if we go to printer output here, I think there we go. Frame rate is 24 frames per second, and these are frames. So it would take only one second uh, to go around if we put it on 24, right? And that would be too fast probably. So we probably want to put it somewhere at like three seconds, somewhere in the neighborhood of around 72. So I'm going to move my um, playhead to 72 frames into the future which is about three seconds into the future and I'm going to go back to my camera constraint and, and where that offset factor is it's highlighted green because it's saved this information at zero so it's kind of a visual indicator that I've, I've got a keyframe now I want to take that and make that one full rotation so 1.0 if I enter that and then I right click and choose insert keyframe that should be one loop so if I move my play scrub you can see my little play scrub playhead um, around. You can see the camera's moving. So now we want to test this to make sure that we want that, that keyframe here at 72 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and go into camera mode and click on play. And that seems like that's probably right. You can adjust this. You can just left, left click onto this, this keyframe and you can adjust it just by dragging it. So here, this would be four seconds, so let's see what that takes. Let's see what that looks like. We're going to rewind and hit play. Oh, that's pretty good, too. So it's really a matter of your preference. I think if you were to take this and move it back so it was only one second, rewind and play, you see that that's probably too fast. Okay, so um, somewhere in the neighborhood of three seconds, which is 72 to maybe up to four seconds. Okay, once you have that set, Okay, so this is right around 90, 93 here. I'm going to go 96, I think. One more over. There we go. And I'm going to, um, I want to cut my frames. I don't want empty frames. When I go to render these, these this will be dead time here. So I want to make sure to get rid of that dead time by putting an in frame in there. So I'm going to put 96 in there. And I can rewind this now. I'll play it. It comes around one full circle. In four seconds, that seems reasonable. 
All right, I think I've got enough. I'm on render mode. That looks like there's enough light in the scene. Uh, it's possible if you want to um, adjust your camera. I'm kind of looking up at the monkey, which is okay. Um, if you wanted to, remember, you could come in and click view camera to view locks your view. Um, and so when you come out here, um, you can rotate your camera. Oh, it's on the path, so um, scratch that. <laughs> All right, so next we want to um, render. So we need to go into our output um, in order to make sure our output is good. Remember, we've set our end frames at 96 because our animation is 96 frames long. Um, you do have to choose an output you can get to. You cannot get to that C temp um, folder. So click folder. Uh, I generally save mine in a Blender folder, um, Blender models, and uh, this is fine. Um, I'll just save it in the main file here. And um, and so we can click accept once you've got a folder that you can access down here. This would just save it as a big set of pictures that you would then need to use a video editing piece of software to put together. We're going to go ahead and skip that step by selecting movie, AVI, JPEG, and we'll bump it up to 100%. So at this point, it's always good to save. If you've not saved, I'm going to go in and save. Um, I am in my Blender class demos. That's fine. So I get to track of your folder. And I'm going to call this um, camera animation and click save. So now um, I am ready to render. So I'm going to hit render, render animation. And um, what you'll see here on the screen is uh, the frames here. So my computer is sort of chugging along and processing each of those frames in the animation and stringing that together as a movie in AVI JPEG format. So I made my 90, about 96 frames. So I'm a little over halfway there. Okay, once it stopped right here, we can see it's reached 96 frames. We're gonna close that out. Um, we can open up a file explorer window. Let's bring that over here. All right. And there's the camera animation blend. We actually wanna go into our blender folder here where we saved our video and just run the video um, so what it does is it usually saves the video um, on the number based on the number of frames so i can see this is the one that was just completed at 11:22 here i'm going to rename this so um, right click choose rename all right and camera animation now i'm going to double click that and there is our video. So that's how you can create a camera animation where you attach the camera to a Bezier circle and have it follow the path. So thanks for your time and energy and attention and I will see you in the next video.